Well, welcome to another episode of Breakaway from the Rat Race. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Brett Levine. Uh, Brett is a, has been an ear, nose, and throat surgeon for 27 years and actively serves as the CEO of the Beach Cities ENTS outside of Los Angeles, California. And over several decades, he faced many obstacles and challenges to remain happy and healthy in medicine today. And uh, the pivotal epiphany he discovered was that the habits which helped him excel to become a physician also kept him stuck, stagnant, and frustrated in life. And then that through various risks and failures, he discovered strategies that were the opposite of what he knew, but which helped him thrive. So this is a very powerful introduction, Brett. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, great. So yeah, tell us. I mean, this is uh, this is a little bit different than uh, our regular kind of. Uh, oh, this is this are my investments, and this is how you know did this. But uh, this particular uh, you know apartment building or this particular house. So this is this is very uh, very great. Uh, I'm glad to have you on board. And um, you're also an active member of several kind of like mastermind groups, uh, including Go Abundance, which is where how we met, and Cashflow Tactics. Uh, do you mind telling us a little bit about that and kind of like what does the, these groups, these masterminds, uh, how do they help you kind of like grow uh, in uh, as an investor or as an individual? That is a great question. Um... Both of these mastermind groups were completely outside the realm of healthcare and medicine. And uh, were definitely uncomfortable at, at the start, but they exposed me to so much I didn't know. So many concepts regarding horizontal income and investing, regarding leverage and using other people to rely on, uh, to make you more efficient, to free up your time, mm -hmm. and really to solve so many problems we experience in medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're obviously very successful as an ENT and a surgeon, and, and it must be hard to find a lot of time to do investments and to do, uh, you know, to basically, I would say, like, almost break away from the rat race, but uh, kind of like, you want, you still want to be able to take time off. And then if you're not working, I mean, you, you know, you're not making money. So uh, how do you how did you manage to spend some time and build some of that horizontal investment that you have? Yeah, it's been a journey. It, mm -hmm. it is a journey. I, I agree. I, I love the name of your podcast and your platform because most doctors are living in a rat race and chasing their tail and doing more and more and working harder and earning less. And during my, probably my second decade in medicine, I was experiencing that and realizing that I cannot, I, there's only a limited amount of time in the day and uh, that limits your potential. So you have to, I was taught that I had to step back and take a look at how I use my time and what I can do differently. That is really what a lot of the strategies I've created and I've implemented in my life to change uh, who I was when I came out of residency and started as a doctor. You start out just doing what everyone else does, but no one, no one obligates you to continue to spend your entire life doing the same thing. And the mastermind groups we talked about really exposed me to so many alternative options and lets you pick and choose what you want to do and who you want to be. I think that's kind of interesting. You mentioned like step back. And uh, I, I think some people in your profession, in the medical profession, uh, you know, at just about any level, this is not, I mean, you, you want to help people, you want to, uh, I mean, this is what, what you, why you chose this, uh, this profession, because you felt the need to, to help other people. And then when you see people in need, it's kind of say, it's kind of hard to say, I suspect it's kind of hard to say, well, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you because I have a, I have to play golf or I have to, you know, something like that is, it must be, you have to learn to kind of step back and say, well, no, it's okay for me to take the day off. It's okay for me to go on vacation, you know, and uh, is that, is that hard to learn? Is that a hard lesson to learn? Absolutely. You, you start out uh, through all 
through 15 years of education and training with a laser focus of nothing else but pursuing your education, developing your skills and your expertise. And you are in a lane mm -hmm. that many people stay in until they die. And, oh. uh, and some people stay in to the sacrifice of their own health, of their families, of really pursuing anything else. One of the, one of the epiphanies I've had and learned and realize and believe is the less time I spend in medicine or the more time I spend outside of medicine, the actually the happier I am in medicine and the better yeah. of a doctor I am because I'm not depleted and I'm not exhausted and I'm not burnt out, mm -hmm. which I'm not yeah. because I play tennis three times every week because I go to all my kids games because I step out of working, but I have the benefit of being in a private practice. And when we have demand, I don't have to do it all myself. I think one of the well, one of the tenants we talk about in breaking out of the medical mindset, my platform, is that you don't have to do it on your own alone. And that is how you succeed in medicine. And that is what you want. If I am with you in the middle of the night and you can't breathe, you don't want me to have to be calling up people for help. And I can do that in medicine, but I don't have to practice medicine with my family. And I don't have to act like I do with a patient the same way with an investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think marriage probably helped me uh, expand how I act and think mm -hmm. and realize that I can't treat my wife like a patient or like she's someone in medicine. And my kids certainly slap me and not, you know, metaphorically and wake me up when I expect them to act like I would act with homework or mm -hmm. with really a lot of things in life. And they're not me. Mm -hmm. And Go Abundance in particular really showed me so many other ways people can succeed and be happy and be successful. Probably more people uh, succeed and are happy and successful outside of the medical mindset than the way things have been done in medicine in the past. Yeah. And I think this is, I mean, you mentioned burnout and all of that and had kind of having the right priorities in life and how you can be a better doctor by kind of like being able to replenish and re refuel yourself. And, uh, but not many people know that there is kind of like this burnout epidemic in the healthcare system. I mean, obviously maybe you guys, since you're in the medical field, you probably are all aware of that, but people on the outside of it like we don't see we don't see that so can you tell us about a little bit more about kind of like what that burnout epidemic in medicine is sure and um you know and maybe have a better understanding of why doctors are a little stressed so there's there's just multiple factors uh culminating in the perfect storm uh there are healthcare worker shortages uh there's been a big exodus of medicine definitely um catalyzed and increased by the COVID pandemic, which was obviously a stress in our healthcare system. So a lot of doctors who were near retirement retired earlier than otherwise, I think because of COVID. There's been a lot of changes that have been happening slowly over decades in medicine. And uh, the debt people are coming out of from residents, from education and training is more than ever before. It is very common, the average debt that we see, and this is for surgeons coming out of training, um, have 300, but I've seen up to $800,000. They are beginning their earning age of life in yeah. their 30s after yeah. they've already sacrificed 15 years of life when they now want to get married, have kids and buy a house yeah. Yeah. and have that debt. So when you add that to so many other things going on, including more electronics and technology, which takes you away from patients and gives you a lot of obligatory things to do, more government regulation, the need to decrease the cost of healthcare. And because physicians or individual providers are not as big of a lobbying group as hospitals or insurance companies, mm -hmm. a lot of the reductions in reimbursement are falling on the backs of providers. Oh, wow. And reimbursement, you'd really be shocked, I think, if you asked your physician, how much do you get paid for this surgery? Mm -hmm. you, you'd be shocked that a tonsillectomy is $200 or Whoa. a septoplasty is three or $400. Yeah. 
It's much less than most people would ever imagine. It's much less than my wife spends to get her hair and nails done. <laughs> and uh, my kids spend to go out to dinner sometimes. Wow. Uh, so a lot of that has combined with uh, the tendency because of this debt and this, this impression that employment in a large entity is more stable than private practice like I'm in. The majority of people coming out of training are now taking jobs. And mm -hmm. when you take someone who's been incredibly com competitive, someone who's been driven, someone who's done it all on their own, and put them in a job where they are told when and how they can clock in and out, what yeah. they will be paid, when they can take off, and they lose that autonomy and that drive for growth and creativity, combining that with not enough people working to support them and technology is the equation that brings people to being overworked, burnout, depressed, not inspired, having just mental and physical fatigue and exhaustion. Mm -hmm. And that is what's going on in medicine. About 50% of doctors or healthcare providers report burnout currently. Oh, wow. And uh, because of that, a lot of people are exiting medicine or looking for other ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. So, but you've, so you've made it to your mission really to help, help the medical field, the medical professionals, uh, and kind of like doing, doing things differently to help them prevent a burnout, be more happy at their jobs and stuff like that. And that's why you started your, your platform boom, which stands for breaking out of the medical mindset. So tell us about, about that. I mean, I, I'm looking at this as a, what do you mean by medical mindset and why would you want to break out of it? Um, so tell us more about that. Yeah, that's a great question. It really is not too different from breaking out of the rat race, which yeah. is your platform. The medical mindset is a mindset that allows you to succeed through four years of pre-med, four years of medical school and five, six or seven or eight years of training. And that is a mindset where you remove all risk, where you control everything where you avoid change or conflict, where you focus on your work and your patients at the expense of everything else, including your own health and your own family, where you give people what they want and need, whether or not it matches what you want and need, where you move from one goal to the next, never stopping, always saying yes, seeing any mistake or any less than perfection as a weakness that must be avoided, and uh, really staying in your lane, doing it alone and on your own. That is how you succeed through pre-med, med school, and residency. Wow. And that gets you there, and that makes you competitive and makes you resilient. And that all works. But if you're going to take that and live your life that way, it really puts you in a trap. Mm -hmm. And I was in that trap for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. trying to do it all on my own, trying to invest in real estate by myself alone, trying to expand what I did on top of having three kids being married, having my own practice. And uh, what I came to realize is I could do things differently outside of medicine. And I could set goals outside of medicine and mastermind with people outside of medicine and leverage operators' skills and talents and my network and other people and expand who I am. I mean, you know who I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I don't think that I am a typical doctor who oh. <laughs> most people see and really dedicate 120% of their life to medicine, bringing it home and nowadays getting burnt out on it. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how, do you, how do you transform or how do you change the, the, the doctor's mindset? Someone that is, is in that, I mean, they go on your boom platform and what's the beginning of that transformation? I, I think it's exposure. I think uh, so on, uh, part of breaking out of the medical mindset, there are two posts every week. One is usually a story, a very short example of how we think in medicine and how I would like people to think in breaking out of the medical mindset and boom. Uh, and we also share Q and A's of questions from our, our audience and share podcast interviews like this and articles I've written on social media platforms. And then the Boom course is a five and a half hour course and really dives into introducing all of these concepts, introducing mm -hmm. goal setting outside of how many patients you're going to see and how much money you're going to earn, but maybe how many vacations you're going to take. One of the goals that I learned from 
go abundance that I never would have thought of. And one of the things I gained was uh, the goal that I've had since being in go abundance, but not really succeeded as well as I would like to take more days off from work every mm -hmm. year for the rest of my life. That seems like an easy goal, mm -hmm. but uh, it hasn't been because if I'm not, if I don't have something else to do, I will usually choose to go into the office and make money. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that is a goal I never would have conceived of. You know, so many things I have gained are just from being exposed to people outside of my world. Most, so much of us, so much of our lives are narrowed by the people we surround ourselves with, which are the people that happen to work with us at the mm -hmm. hospital or in our offices. And that is what we're exposed to. And when you broaden that exposure, it change, it's life-changing. Mm -hmm. So we talk about in breaking out of the medical mindset, the benefit of leverage of networks of your tribe. I mean, that is transformational. We talk about um, the benefits of horizontal income and real estate and Robert Kiyosaki and just the yeah. idea that everything doesn't have to be based on you and that your money could make you money, but you have to be able to save money and then yeah. have ways to invest it, which you talk about all the time on your platform. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that this is good. I and mean, I think so when you have a doctor that's uh, basically hears this, and uh, I'm hoping that they're going to be able to relate instantaneously and say, this is me, this is me. I can't take I can't take vacation. If I have nothing else to do, then this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and so they would just go on. The, so they could just go on your boom platform. And then they could, you know, obviously read the content, the newsletter, take the course. Uh, but is there also uh, is there a way kind of like of networking with doctors or do you, that's that's the problem you don't want to network with any more doctors uh, so you have to network outside of the group yeah so, how do I, so the future uh, this mm -hmm. this is a platform that was launched January of this year so it's relatively new oh, wow. and the course is our first step but yeah. the future is that we will expose our community to operators and syndicators who we know that they can invest in that i've invested in yeah. many and most of whom i know personally as you and i do because yeah. they're part of our groups uh connecting people with opportunities whether it's other courses whether it's actual mastermind groups to participate in uh but really this is baby steps mm -hmm. um breaking out of the medical mindset is exposure to a world you don't know because you mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. it is exposure and, and a taste of so much, because really everything I talk about in the course, each individual module of the 30 modules could be a book and course in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about yeah. investing or horizontal income or the benefits of real estate are huge platforms that already exist. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, uh, I am trying to translate for people in healthcare who come from where I am and come from uh, all that I learned in 30 years in these 30 modules to open the door, to join GoBundance, to be part of cash flow tactics, mm -hmm. to uh, listen to a call and understand what they're talking about when an operator shares an opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say I just want to expand it a little, broaden a little bit. I think that uh, I think definitely the, your, the medical mindset is definitely sounds very intense. Uh, there are, uh, but I want to broaden it also to other people and that so that even if you're not in the medical profession, if you're an engineer or something like that, you have similar things going on in your mind where you are completely absorbed by, um, you know, by your job, by, and all your friends are also engineers and, and then all you talk about is programming and uh, you just that's the world that you're in and there, there are so many people uh, like that that they're completely absorbed by their jobs uh, and their profession and uh, they are their profession uh, if you ask them uh, you know how who are you i said well i'm, I'm an engineer is that is that who you are really is that's your, that's your job that's is that your uh, is that who you truly truly are so I think that's just, I just wanted to broaden it a little bit. I mean, I think this, uh, the medical, the medical minds is definitely something that's very unique and intense, but I think uh, a lot of us uh, that are in the rat race that are working full-time in also, you know, somewhat demanding jobs, they can also relate to that and extrapolate in their own situation to, 
to go and seek out other opportunities, other network, other people and activities outside of their current network to kind of broaden their, their horizon and, uh, and see a little bit more of the world and other point of views, I think. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, one of the gifts from medicine is every day I see 20 patients and they remind me of my mortality. They remind <laughs> me of that none of us knows how long we're going to live yeah. and what tomorrow will bring. And because of that, I do want to gain as much of life as I can gain. One of mm -hmm. the modules in Boom, in the Boom 1.0 course, is that you are more than a doctor. You are more than a nurse. You are more than an engineer. You are more than a real estate syndicator. And we all want to experience the most out of life. But that's mm -hmm. never going to happen just randomly or spontaneously. Yeah. You really do need to step back and look at how you use your time and see how you can free yourself up and how you can set goals and visions within and outside of your career and your finances. Mm -hmm. So Brett, that must be, uh, I mean, did, did you have a mentor or something like that? Or you were just like, uh, you just happened to listen to your wife and your kids and you say, oh, you know what, you're right, I do. Like, how did you personally, you were the only one that broke away from your, your own medical mindset. So how, how did you manage to figure that out on your own? Yeah, it's a really great question. And I would say I've had many trials, crises, and failures during my years of life and through training. I've been fired, uh, which forced me to start my own private practice. So I started my business. You can, you can be fired as a doctor? What? You, most, <laughs> most people in healthcare are employed now. Oh, in wow. fact, one of the people we hired a few years ago had worked for 35 years for a medical group, which just decided... I don't know why, but I'm sure it had to do with financials, that they no longer needed their ENT department. So wow. they let go of the three people who had been there for 35 years. Uh, wow. They were in their 60s and 70s at the time and didn't really want to start a new career or a new job. But one of them chose to join us because they knew mm -hmm. us. And wow. So, yeah, I mean, during COVID, there were many people who were furloughed, who were physicians and nurses because of budgeting constraints and mm -hmm. lack of capacity and, and the crisis we all dealt with. And I think these were experiences most people never thought of. But in private practice, you have a different level of mm -hmm. ownership and control. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm a big advocate of that. Um, so that was one crisis that I went through, but I, mm -hmm. I, I've had many. I, I, I've had you know, three different offices, eating my lunch in my car, running around and realizing that I had to close an office to really focus on the life I wanted to have and making choices, not just for, for the growth of my bank account mm -hmm. and my career and my patient volume, but mm -hmm. also for what, who I want to be in the future. And I make choices like that all the time. I used to say yes to most things and chose no only when it was excruciating. And now I choose no, unless it's a hell yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that's, that I had to come to learn. I had to come to learn to not control everything mm -hmm. and to let other people do things for me that may not be exactly how I do it, but were good enough to free me up. Mm -hmm. You know, these are just different choices and different uh, strategies you find when your pain is so bad, when you're yeah. in such bad crisis and you have such a bad problem, that is also a wake up call that mm -hmm. something needs to change. And really, one of the things I speak about all over breaking out of the medical mindset is if you want to change your life, you have to change your mind. And changing your mind means changing who you are and how you think. Yeah. And those are all lessons I've had to learn and continue to learn. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, absolutely true. I mean, I, you know, the, in my book too, that's the first, the first few chapters in my book is all about the mindset and then kind of like clear, cleaning, cleaning that up and uh, making, otherwise you can't, yeah, I mean, if you believe there are a different set of beliefs and you have limiting beliefs, you, you know, you just, that's where you're going to be stuck. I and mean, we see that all the time. So uh, after you, you so you've you've done all this, you've done boom, and you said, you know this is the very new group, and I wish you a lot of success with that. And then after you've done this, I mean, you started. In, did you that when you started investing in in the businesses? I think you have like a, a number of different uh, income stream now. You have like two businesses. You're in real estate syndication for multifamily, and 
self storage and mobile home park and all that you have a whole portfolio now of investments uh, is that uh, the fact that you were able to kind of break away in a practice and break away out of the break out of the medical mindset uh, is that what allowed you to kind of invest in that or you already started and then you just did allowed you to kind of double down on those things yeah i think both happened synchronously uh, I was searching for change and something more, which is when I began joining mastermind groups. Uh, at the same time, I was in a private practice and I just converted my solo practice, again, doing it all on my own alone, to a group after convincing uh, someone I was sharing space with for several, I shared space with him for 15 years before yeah. I was able to convince him to form a group and hire other physicians to, which, which again, freed us up, allowed us mm -hmm. to have our, all of our, static overhead that we were paying whether we were there or not uh serviced by other physicians and other providers so we were still working and making money whether we were there or not and one of the common strategic alliances and side gigs that ear nose and throat surgeons have is hearing testing and balance testing and hearing aids mm -hmm. so uh, we formed a separate company that helps support that and through Robert Kiyosaki and Go Abundance and my learning of horizontal income, I began looking in Southern California for cash flowing properties. Mm -hmm. And as you know, that's, that's a hard <laughs> sell. I spent again, a year and a half going yeah. to open houses and running numbers and not figuring uh -huh. out how to make this happen. Yeah. And after a year and a half of doing this uh, by myself and failing, uh, I actually started talking to other people about it, which most doctors don't do because we feel like we have to only talk about medicine to people or they think we're going to be less than uh, mm -hmm. the best doctor possible. And through a friend of a friend, I found turnkey operators outside of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to me, I really landed uh, a great team that mm -hmm. finds me houses there that I purchase and they do the birth strategy and rehab them. And then we rent them out and they manage them for me. So I've got nine doors outside oh, nice. of Dallas and one in St. Louis. And that was how I began. And then through joining Go Abundance, I was exposed to syndicators who I could actually meet, know, and talk to on a regular basis, as opposed to someone on the internet that you're just hoping is mm -hmm. what they advertise. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot. And that's where I started investing in multifamily and then met people who are in self-storage and mobile home parks mm -hmm. and started investing. And then just began uh, expanding my exposure mm -hmm. and who I wanted to be and what I could do. And, uh, you know, recently with several of the people you and I both know in our local tribe, we bought mm -hmm. a apartment complex in Kansas city. Mm -hmm. That's a long-term buy and hold, which I'm very excited about because it's hard to scale single family up to the numbers that will give you enough horizontal income. So I'm just expanding my asset classes and my portfolio. Mm -hmm over time well this is great this is very uh and you know yeah and in order for people to do this i mean you have to come to you have to change your mindset you have to be able to kind of look at it and say I, you know this is something that i need to do i need to build start building my passive income and then uh it doesn't mean like you you have to stop working obviously uh brett you're still you're still working you're still helping people uh, and uh, and growing your practice and all of that, but at the same time you have you have passive income that's coming in, building multi generational wealth for you know your children and all that. So, you know this is this is fantastic, and this is you, you must feel more fulfilled, I would say, uh, knowing that this is uh, that you've managed to build all this a solid foundation for the, the next generation. It's exciting. But I, th I think the most powerful thing is how all of these experiences uh, transform who I am, which is the role model for my kids. Mm -hmm. It is what they yeah. see. They see our mastermind groups here at the house. They know people in my mastermind groups. They know my turnkey operators and uh, have visited some of my properties. They understand the concept of saving and investing as opposed mm -hmm. to just spending all your money and buying technology and fun things like kids do. They see how I balance out my time. They see how actively involved we are. They, they really see our network of people. We have a really large network of support and how 
having those people benefit you in life in, mm -hmm. in really all aspects of life, whether it's being a parent or whether it's being physically fit or whether it's investing your money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, you really can't do it all alone mm -hmm. on your own. Yeah. Uh, and I, there's just such unlimited potential uh, with leverage, leveraging mm -hmm. your time, leveraging your money, leveraging the people in your, in your world. Yeah. And uh, all of those things are foreign to how you succeed in medicine and get there. That mm -hmm. is how you break out of the medical mindset. That is how you break out of the rat race yeah. that yeah. people are in working, working, working to hopefully retire someday. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's true too. I mean, building to me, like building the team is, is critically important. I mean, just kind of like multiple, there's leverage of you know, there's financial leverage, but to me, like leveraging other people and uh, it's just, it's just phenomenal. I mean, you're multiplying your, your effort, you're multiplying your uh, everything, everything that you're trying to do, because these people are, uh, you know, they're helping you achieve that. But it's also a growing opportunity for them as well. I mean, we're looking, we're promoting people to different roles, we're, you know, and giving them an opportunity that they probably wouldn't get uh, somewhere else, you know, or not, maybe not this, this soon. So my, my focus this year is actually hire even more people, hire even more A players uh, for the different kind of uh, companies and projects that I, that I, we're launching this year. So like a to tokenized real estate fund, and we have another one, which is uh, an NFT that we're doing. And I'm just looking for someone that's going to be the CEO of these companies and then drive, drive this forward and be the, be the lead, be the operator. So, and just because I learned that, yeah, this is what I need to, pe people are going to be grateful for this opportunity and it's going to be, it's going to be great for me as well. I get to coach them to, to do uh, what we want to do, what the goals, what the mission is. And then, uh, but it's a great opportunity for them to, to grow it, into a role. Yeah. It's a win-win for both. Yeah, exactly. You gain and you give. Yeah. And uh, I gain from the associates that come into the practice. They teach me how to be a better boss or how to communicate differently. Uh, I have gained so much from the office managers I've hired to mm -hmm. just tell me how to say things in a different way that lands in a different way uh, and how to support them. Uh, you, it's all a win-win, really. Yeah. I think. yeah, yeah. I was very much like you uh, at the beginning too, like uh, for very, for many years. I mean, I would give opportunities to people to do something for me, but then if it took too long or if it was, you know, or whatever, or it cost too much, then I said, oh, forget about it, I'll just do it. And then, uh, so yeah, the calculus was uh, has changed now. So now I'm much more focused on, uh, yeah, having somebody else do it. They may not be, they're gonna do it their own way, and then I can, you know, provide feedback and if it's, you know, and then grow together and kind of like find somewhere. My way is not necessarily the best way. Uh, I've learned to uh, accept that. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, it's a learning curve for sure. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. It never then, stops. I, I really right. believe we never stop learning and I will never stop learning during my entire life. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And the ir irony of it is, most people go into healthcare or engineering or many of these professions because they have a thirst for growing and yearning and learning and expanding who they are and what they can be. Mm -hmm. And when you finally finish your, your education and training, you know, you're ready to get going, but the learning never really stops. Mm -hmm. When people join us after all of this uh, time and sacrifice and investment, uh, they just start learning how to build, how to network yourself, how to become more efficient, how to expand your life. I mean, I, mm -hmm. really, for me, breaking out of the medical mindset is perfect when you are a few years out into your first job and you're really now coming out of the world, coming out of the spaceship of hibernation and yeah. wanting to <laughs> live and create a life because you really are, you really, uh, you really hibernate for a while and don't mm -hmm. have any life during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I studied as an actuary. Uh, I was an actuary for a while, uh, associate actuary. And it was kind of the similar thing because you would kind of, uh, you'd study for tests, like every six months you had tests and tests and tests. And then 
and then people that I was working with and stuff like that, I realized that they didn't have anything else to talk about and they didn't know anything about history. They didn't know anything about art. They didn't know anything about literature because they didn't have time to, to read anything, to see anything, to go anywhere. And it's just like, I said, is that the, per the kind of person I want to be? And, you know, and um, yeah, so I decided, uh, I decided on a new path uh, at that point, but it was kind of interesting. Yeah, during my yeah. surgery internship, you spent every other night in the hospital sleeping there. I don't even know if I saw the news. It, I, I can't even tell you what happened in the world that year. Mm, All yeah. I knew is I survived it, went through and moved on. Mm. And, uh, you know, a lot of training is a massive gain of knowledge and skills, but the rest of your life is missing to a mm -hmm. great degree. I, I, I applaud those who can get married or have children during that time. Mm. I was so unilaterally focused I didn't do anything till I got out. And then suddenly, you know, now people are in their earlier mid or late thirties and you have this speed, you know, catch up phase of how fast can I get married, have kids and buy a house because everyone else did this 15 yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's a, it is a different life experience, but there are ways to win and enjoy it and still make it work. Yeah. So basically, as soon as you're done with that, the school, the internship and all of that, you need to go on BOOM, B-O-O-M-M, -M, breaking out of the medical mindset. You have to join that before it's too late, before you get in the August that's ingrained and then your life goes by and uh, you at retirement and then all of a sudden say, well, I should have joined this earlier. So make sure you join that and, uh, you know, share your experience and learn from other medical professionals who have, have lived through it and they can really share with you some, uh, some breakthrough kind of like principles on how to have a more balanced lifestyle, I would think. Absolutely. Yeah. So Brett, well, thank you very much. Anything else you want to uh, promote before we wrap up? I just want to leave uh, the website address so everyone mm -hmm. knows because it's it's either www.breakingoutofthemedicalmindset.com, which is very long, mm -hmm. or it is boom, B-O-O-M, mindset, M-I-N-D-S-E-T.com. Okay. Boommindset.com is the easiest way to get on. You can sign up for the free newsletter mm -hmm. and check out the course. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Brad, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your experience and uh, your personal life changes. I uh, hope that... Uh, I hope this is going to help a lot of uh, medical professionals out there. I do as well. This has been a great time. Thank you so much, Eric, for the opportunity. Thank you, Brett. Thank you for listening to Break Away from the Rat Race with your host, Eric Martel. If you want to share your story and experience with our listeners, please message us on Facebook at Break Away from the Rat Race. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on iTunes.